Peace of the Lord be with you all on this marvelous day. Every day is a marvelous day because it's a day that the Lord has made. So we must rejoice and be glad in it. Um, so last week I had mentioned to you guys that I was going to have a guest speaker and um, she is my sister Diana. So introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Diana. I'm her sister. And so today she invited me to be on her program. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, you're welcome, sister. <laughs> um, and I, I had mentioned that we were going to be talking about um, a very interesting topic that I think um, like a lot of Catholic people or even non-Catholics should know, which is um, like what happens when you decide to um, meddle into maybe card readings, maybe doing some type of yoga, um, astrology, um, any of those things that are new age practices. And so we're kind of going to start off by um, going into scripture and um, reading off out of Deuteronomy um, 18, 9 through 14. So it says, when you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices div deviate divination, divination and soothsayer, or an augur or a sorcerer, or a charmer or medium or a wizard or a necromancer. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord, and because these abominable practices, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God, for these nations which you are about to dispossess give heed to the soothsayers and to the diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you so to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So we were kind of like going over some of the words, so we want to like point a few of the words out because we were kind of like, okay, well, what does that really mean? So auger is one who... Um, one held to foretell events uh, by omens and so those are like big no-nos a soothsayer is a person who predicts the future by magical means and then necromancy is conjuring of spirits of the dead for purpose of magical uh, revealing the future or influencing the course of the events uh, it's also known as sorcery um, or magic or anything like that is all part of that necromancy so um, we're going to go ahead and kind of get into this topic, um, especially kind of giving you guys um, kind of like stories of people that kind of had shared things with us about things that they've done. So I'm going to have my sister, Diana, kind of um, start off this, um, this talk. So go for it, sister. So um, I guess my dealings with this uh, in particular... Um, oh, when I was about 15 years old, I met a girl in high school and, and this is what's like so important for parents to really tell their students or not their students, but their kids because it does exist. Okay. Evil does exist. And I didn't really know how evil like this really was to deal with like tarot card greetings, to go to palm readers, to go with people that, um, that uh, foretell the future and things like that. I mean, this is deviation, and deviation puts you at mortal, in mortal sin, and at risk, uh, basically to, to go to hell. You know, if I would have died in that time frame, you know, I, I think like God had so much mercy on me that He made sure that, you know, I had an opportunity to repent. But I came across this young lady and she i thought she was one of my really good friends and one thing about um my family and myself is that we we take in people like family you're not just our friend you're our family and so she was like that to me and she introduced me to card reading and i was 15 i had no clue what this was even about um all i knew was that um that it was kind of fun and this is this is where the danger is because our kids think that it's no big deal. You know, they think of 
um, the Ouija board, it's no big deal and they think it's fun and oh my God, it said this and, and you know, how did it know? And so then the devil just entices you and then you get overwhelmed in it. So um, she started to introduce me to card reading and then uh, she introduced me, her mom. Uh, she introduced me to um, like, she told me that to conjure basically like an angel and to pray to him. And so uh, later I found out that it was a fallen angel. And then when I like confronted her mom about it, her mom said, oh, well, I don't know. It's, um, you know, it, it's some someone that does a lot of favors for me. And like, I still did, I was so blinded by the fact that I thought that these people were real Catholic. Um, in their home, they had the blessed Virgin Mary, they had statues, they had crosses. I mean, they would, they wouldn't go to church all the time, but I mean, they went to church uh, seldomly and I had seen them in church every now and then. So I thought they were good Catholic people. And we came from a, a good Catholic home with a good upbringing. However, my mom never really talked about that part. Like I had no clue that that even existed. So um, I was introduced to it in school. And so um, I remember that, you know, I was getting my cards read. And like I said, this angel that I had no clue was in, was a fallen angel. Um, I would pray to it because they told me to, you know, and I was so naive and so dumb. And then just, I just did, you know, thought it was easy and thought it was kind of exciting. So I remember one day that I was going in the backyard of my parents' house and they have this huge backyard. And all of a sudden I heard, um, I well, I, I had this intuition in my heart and it said like, what if somebody comes out? You know, what if somebody comes out at you? And I thought to myself, no, that couldn't happen. And I just kept walking and all of a sudden, in my ear I heard the most horrifying grunt in the, in the world. I mean, I, I have never heard something so terrifying um, what I heard that day and so I heard it in my ear and I and I covered my ears because I was so scared um and I started to laugh and cry and I and I kept saying no 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 and so um I started to run and I could still even though I had my ears covered I could hear it inside of my ear and it wanted to say something and I knew one thing like whatever it was I knew it was evil like I knew it was but I didn't really know what was going on and I remember that after that happened, um, I was trying to get the door open to my house and I couldn't get it open. And my finally, I, my sister opens the door and she's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm crying and I'm laughing. And so I'm going through all these things. And she's like, um, you know, uh, the door was open. Why, you know, and I'm like, I couldn't get it open. It was locked. I couldn't. And so anyhow, you know, I just dismissed it. I mean, I can't even believe now that I, that I think about it. You know, like how could I have dismissed such a warning, you know? Uh, to make a long story short, fast forward to the end of that school year, um, this girl and I um, had a mutual friend. And actually that mutual friend was the one that introduced me to this girl. And uh, that mutual friend that we had, this girl that introduced me to card reading and to um, basically uh, what they call in Mexican culture, brujería, um, she put me against this mutual friend we had and so being that I was 15 years old and I was really upset I was gonna go and um like square up you know and I was gonna go and confront her and be like okay so I heard you were saying this and, and that so anyways I do I go and tell this girl like you know I heard you were saying this and she said wait a minute she's like well this girl said this and this that you said about me and so she put us against each other and one thing to remember is that the devil's a liar he's a deceiver and he will try anything to cause division and so this is exactly what had happened because we didn't communicate uh i didn't communicate with that mutual friend i didn't know everything that was going on and she says you know this girl hates you she's always hated you and she's tried to put a spell on you and i was like floored because this girl, this whole time, was one of my best friends. Um, and I just couldn't even wrap my mind around that someone would do that to me. I mean, it was, it was total betrayal. And so uh, we went on summer break and I didn't see my friends. And I didn't see this girl for the remainder of the summer. But I remember this hate that I have never had ever felt 
since and 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 ever in my life um, I felt it then and I felt it for this girl and I remember when it was time for um, the school year to start up again um, we it's we're, you know it's our first day we're at the high school and this girl uh, that you know I, I hated at this point because I couldn't believe that she hated me this girl said told me that she this girl hated me and that um, she tried to put a spell on me and I just couldn't believe it and I was like what do you mean we're supposed to be best friends so anyways the the beginning of the year starts and we're out in the middle of the quad at our high school and she reaches her arms wide and she says my friend and I couldn't believe she was saying that to me because I was like girl I know everything you've said about me so um, I put my hand out in front of her and I said you are not my friend like I was your friend but you were not my friend and you are not my friend like don't call me friend and so uh, she just kind of like stopped and she looked at me and she said I know like I know I I don't know how to be a friend but it's something that I'm learning and I and I said well I heard you know I started telling her everything I heard and I said um, and I heard that you tried to put a spell on me and she said yeah you you're right you know you you're right I did do those things and so for me in that moment I was like what do you mean because look usually people deny things and they don't tell you straight up what they're thinking what they're doing um, especially if they're trying to lie to you and keep things from you but this girl straight up said yes I did that yes I said this yes everything I tried to put a spell on you blah 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 and so she said you know but you should thank your mom and she said because uh, your mom your mom's prayers have you covered and so um, my mom like my mom prays the rosary like you wouldn't believe so I know that mama Mary was totally taking care of me I mean this is my girl you know she was totally taking care of me and I know that it had everything to do with my mom's um, petitions you know her intercession over me and asking mother to protect me like when my mom couldn't protect me in the spiritual sense my heavenly mo mother was always there making sure that I was okay and so um, and this girl um, we we lost touch and for a long time you know I wondered why I had experienced this um, but you know I do believe that God has a plan and he uses you know when when we change our lives in Christ you know those moments we use them to glorify him and so I have now the opportunity to speak of those things that that can possibly lead you to hell and so uh, in the Mexican culture a lot of the times people go to like botanicas I don't know if you're familiar with botanicas but they have Mother Mary out in the front, they have saints, and they use them as decoys, which is such a grave sin because my mother is a heavenly mother, my Mother Mary, and she should not be placed out in front of a botanica because that is such a sin. Because they're using my blessed mother, they're using my Lord, my God and Savior, all of our saints to draw in poor Catholic people that don't have the knowledge. And so um, then they do things like limpias, they do tarot card readings, they call themselves spiritual guides, and I don't know what else, but nonetheless, it is wrong, it is bad, and it will put you at risk of uh, mortal sin, being in mortal sin and at risk of losing um, your salvation because you're dealing with the demonic. And when you're dealing with the demonic like that, you put yourself at risk to the influences of it possession I mean um, just t I mean terrible things depression anxiety um, wanting to commit suicide uh, suicide idolation and that all comes from the enemy and so um, fast forward um, I remember when um, God finally um, I started to uh, God really came into my life and he um, wanted me to change my life and you know I went away from the church for a long time um, but one day God came knocking at my door and I was like okay Lord like I know you I knew you when I was young and I need to get back to that and so like um, there came a moment where I was like okay Lord I'm gonna serve you for the rest of my life well then that started my walk in this in the spiritual kind of 
warfare and so like it kind of gives me an understanding to why so um i came across this um uh, priest and a couple of seminarians that happened to be our buddies and um at that time um it was probably about uh seven eight years ago uh here in our town not too far from actually from our town there was a case where this kid was possessed and, and like I kind of want to say something about this um, it's very important to kind of note like um, Dana was talking about how our mother um, prays a lot for us she truly does pray for us like every day even though we're we're already walking in in the light of Christ and stuff she still prays for us and it just goes to show like when your mother blesses you how much that blessing can go in abundance and if your mother was to curse if your mother was to curse you um, that also has a major effect and so um so then dan is talking about now um a seminarian who are now priests um that, this happened a few years ago and it's th one of the greatest things and i've kind of spoke about this is that the devil one of his greatest lies is that he doesn't exist and he makes a lot of people believe that he doesn't exist and so um and sometimes even within our clergy our priests some of them don't believe that there's a hell that there's you know a devil and it, this particular priest um, kind of didn't believe in that, you know, didn't believe that there was, you know, a devil. And so hence, um, God kind of showed him like there is. And so I, do you want to kind of talk about that? So, um, so it happens that um, this priest actually was a friend of my mother's and he had told my mom that he didn't believe in the devil like months before this event occurred. And so um, one day, um, a couple of kids went to the church, to the parish, and they were like, Father, we need you, we need you at the house, something's wrong with my brother. So he goes there with the two seminarians, and uh, one of the seminarians happens to go in, and he like automatically walks in and realizes that this is a full-on possession. Like, this is some serious heavy-duty stuff. So he walks back out and he tells the father, you know, like, this is what's, what it, what is, and we need you to uh, pray over us, and then we need to go in there. So they went in, and uh, the priest was, like, floored at what he was looking at, and the kid was speaking a totally different language. He was contorting in positions that um humanly that it's not humanly possible um and he looked at the priest and he started to laugh at him and he said you know you you you're afraid you're afraid and so um from that experience um the one of the seminarians that was there he was able to see um that this there was a woman and there was this child and they had there was this um circle of fire and they were in the middle and so his mom wasn't there when this had happened but this kid was um basically possessed and he told the the priest that you know there was many and so whenever they would um when they were praying for him they would play the they would pray the magnificat and that's what would help him and he would tell him keep praying that that helps me and he the kid said that every time that the that the priest put holy water on him it created holes in the room that the devil would take that the demons would take him so he was able to see all these demons that were there and he would describe them to uh the priest and so um finally you know they calmed it down and you know they they he, this kid got taken to the hospital because i there's certain things that have to occur before even an exorcism can occur and so they basically referred him to um you know the the diocese um exorcist and so um when the parents came back from mexico they met with the priest and the seminarian and so the priest was like the seminary was like um did you have you g gone to go do any type of witchcraft or anything like that and the mom was like no 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 and then he said well this is what i saw and he told her what he saw and she said well yes i i did. it wasn't a it wasn't a she said it wasn't like a witchcraft she said it was a white magic you know but the thing is here is that and so then that's when they found out that this is where all this conjuring of demons came from and that ended up going into her son but you know it doesn't matter if you're doing black magic or white magic if you think you're doing whatever 
it is bad regardless whether you think it's good whatever it is bad it's it's deviation it talks about it in the bible and it will affect you it will affect your family it will go through generations and generations um and you just don't want to deal with that so this needs to be broken now today we need to be aware of it and so um this mother tells him what had happened and so this kid um was dealing with this so um, of course, when I came to find out about this story, I was so afraid. I mean, I remember I went to confession about it, but I didn't really go into detail about it. And um, I think to myself, like before, well, how much did I really repent about it? Well, I didn't know the severity of what my sin had done. And at this time, I already had kids. So um, I was so afraid. I was so afraid that um, my kids would be affected by um, such evil so I remember that I took it to confession and I prayed and I um, I actually there's a book from uh, father um, uh, what's his name the exorcist priest father not referendor um. no not father Emma but the one that comes to father, father James Moore no oh god I have his book hold on <laughs> Okay, we're back. Okay, so Father Theodoro Kranz. Theodoro Kranz. Okay, so like this is actually in Spanish, but he does have some literature in English. But um, I, um, he has prayers in here to totally cut out any generational curses or anything like that, and you just pray the blood of Jesus over your family and um, cutting away from anything that has to do with the occult. Okay. And so anyhow, uh, Stephanie will put a link on this book and then I have other books to share as well. So um, I, after that, God took me into a totally different path. I mean, not a different path, but into the spiritual warfare path. Okay, and I remember that I was involved. Um, I had gone, you know, I started to get involved in retreats and really fishing for souls for Christ and to advance the kingdom of God. And this is what our goal should be but also telling the people the truth what we have by our arrogance or you know our lack of knowledge that we we dove into and how we were at risk right and by the grace of god that no longer is part of my life um but um how it could influence your family how uh, the devil could get in there and he can cause a lot of damage and so, um, you know, I came across this uh, young lady and uh, we were praying and it was, we had just finished a retreat and we were sealing, um, covering ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus and just cutting the enemy from any part of our um, lives, you know, creating, praying for that hedge of protection all around us. And all of a sudden there's a manifestation with this young lady. And at first I thought it was just a simple like, painful liberation you know um something that just needed prayer and it would go away maybe it could be resentment maybe it could be unforgiveness or something like that you know but didn't think it was uh possession but i remember that i um i put my hand to pray for her on her abdomen and i could feel things moving in her abdomen and i i just right away knew i was like oh no so i took my hand off and we just started praying the the rosary so, um, you know, God showed uh, me that uh, this was something that is not out of the, uh, something that you don't, you won't see. You know what I mean? Something that's rare. It's not. And we have to tell our family about it. And we have to tell people about it. Because if they ever have dealt in the occult, it's going to come back with effects. So like... Uh, yoga, Ricky, um, going to the to the fortune teller, palm reading, uh, 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 what else? Tarot Santeria, card reading. Uh, card reading um, you know, people are, are um, they 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 say Santa Muerte, you know, and that and that in English is like the holy death. Is that what it is? It's or like um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But if there's nothing holy about that death, you know, yeah. and because you know, obviously Jesus conquered death, you know, on the cross. He resurrected, and so a lot of a lot of people in the Hispanic community um, have this devotion to this death, and um, and it's kind of crazy because um, you know sometimes we feel like when we go to these things, um, and you know, the devil promises all of these things. You know, if we want riches. Um, he can give it to us and yet at the end of the day the end of your life like he will come back and um basically is like waiting to to um devour you. devour you to end your life like that's what the payment is is your life and um i think it's what's crazy is that um diana kind of had mentioned um a, a story of, about somebody that um i guess the whole family kind of was involved in this um, devotion to this death mm -hmm. and um, e everybody in that family died a very hideous death yeah. um, a lot of them um, their skin fell off mm -hmm. and they died that way so it just goes to show like you know if you follow God like your death is going to be a holy death and mm -hmm. if you follow the devil your death is going to be a horrifying a horrifying death, death. Mm -hmm. and so obviously I want to you know I, when I die <laughs> to die a holy death you know what i mean but um i don't know it's just crazy like you know sometimes um we feel like th we don't see the effect of it and we don't understand it until maybe until we're in heaven or you know time has passed and then we start seeing the repercussions behind the things that we do mm -hmm. and sometimes we think well it's my life and nothing's gonna happen but then three generations down the things that you did in your life are affecting your generations mm -hmm. and it's like dang it like when you're in this walk, you start to understand all these things. And so your immediate thing is like Dana was saying, like, how do you cut all these things off? And obviously um, the thing is to pray about it and to just sever it. And that way it doesn't continue on into your um, your tree, you know, and um, taking it to confession. Um, and what, what and else it's is, important is, to to tell your kids and to mm -hmm. tell like those people that um you know your friends or those people that surround you because the thing is that like the devil if we don't speak about the truth what has happened or what what we know of then we then the, it's easy for the devil to come in and say his lies you know sometimes people go to mediums you know i've known people that go to mediums because you know this family member died and i want to know what how, what they're feeling or what whatever you know no that is wrong that is wrong. We are not to talk to the dead. Okay? We are not to talk to the dead. And it's going back to that necromancy. Um, it, it says it in the Bible, you know, and um, it's prohibited. It says that it's prohibited. If you go back to Deuteronomy, yeah, you know, it talks about that and it says that it's prohibited. And so um, it just is just so much. Uh, damage can come from it and just stay away from them like my sister said about um, what is called La Santa Muerte and you know the other day I was thinking about it and I was telling my sister I remember we used to go to this guy that used to do our hair and one day we and this was before even starting my walk in the faith I um, I wasn't really I mean I was a Catholic but only by name I wasn't a true practicing Catholic I did not even I mean I didn't know so I mean you know I was like you know the world now that says why well, don't you go to church to have a relationship with God and so um, that was me and so uh, we were out um, we had gone to eat with the guy that did our hair and we had gone to this Chinese place and um, I look at him and I see a skeleton like it was literally looked like a skeleton in his face. And I mean, I just was like, Lord, like, I don't know what I'm seeing. Like, why am I seeing a skeleton on his face? And I, you know, and I didn't know why I, I kept seeing this. So my sister goes to the bathroom. I follow her and she's like, I'm leaving. And I'm like, why are you leaving? And she's like freaking out. And she's like, I just saw like a skeleton on this guy's face and blah, blah, blah. And but, but what was funny though about this is that I had seen this prior to us going to the Chinese restaurant. I saw it when he was doing my hair. So as he was, you know, um, doing my hair and I would look up into the mirror and like I could see his face was in his face no longer. It was an actual like skeleton, mm -hmm. but it was scary. And so like, obviously it's, you know, when the wipers like, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Like, 
am I really seeing what I'm seeing? Or, you know, and so I had to like double take and I looked and again, you saw it and I was just like freaking out. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what's going on? Because obviously, like she's saying, we really hadn't dug into our faith. We were Catholic, but just by name. Um, and so these things were like God permitted us to see these things and yet we hadn't been walking yet. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I thought it was crazy and I didn't understand why we saw that. But then Diana kind of had like an aha moment the other day. So let her so continue telling you. So I had you. always asked God, like, why did I see that? Like I had no clue. Okay. I had no clue why I seen that. And, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling Stephanie how um, somebody had shared with me about their, um, you know, their family's encounter with the Santa Muerte. And so I was just telling them, you know, how terrible that was, how bad it was. And she, and, you know, this, this girl was confirming to me that how terrible it was, how the family was dying, how her cousin and how all these people were dying and they were dying horrible deaths. Um, all because they, they adored this idol you know, and so, um, you know, I, I was just, you know, thinking about it. And I remember in the past, I would tell God, like, to show me why I saw that skeleton on this hairdresser's face. And I, like, last week, it just popped into my head. And I'm like, how, what in the world, Diana? Like, how did you not know? But I remember that he had a, he had a closet where um, he kept his supplies. And I remember it like vividly, like vividly. It was like he had a statue of the Santa Muerte. And, but I didn't know at that time that it was even in something bad. I didn't really even know nothing about it. But I remember that it was there. And now it just makes total sense why um, we happened to see that. I think it was like a warning, like, hey, dude, get out of here. Like, look at, like, you're straight up seeing, you know, the devil in this guy's face because he probably has given himself over to what is called the Santa Muerte, but there's so much evil behind it. Um, soon after that, we lost total touch with this individual and it was kind of crazy because, I mean, we used to go with him all of the time for him to do our hair and we lost total touch. Uh, and it's just like, you know, God was taking care of us like seriously, God is taking care of us. Mother Mary taking care of us. Uh, she's like, my children, my retarded children, <laughs> turn this way, you know? And we're like, oh, you know? We're so dumb, but you know, it was just, um, but it was just like, I just can't believe, like for so many years I've asked why, and it just barely has dawned on me why. So uh, we just wanna let you know, and we want you to share. We want you to share this, and we want you, uh, to know even um, after that like I started to really research on those things that can Really harm us and put us at risk. So I'm going to share with you one of the books that um, I found very helpful This this manual on spiritual warfare okay, and it talks about um, Preparing yourself for battle so knowing who your enemy is uh you're, the battle that you're in because it's a spiritual warfare. It says it in the Bible, you know, that it's not uh, something that we can see, right? It talks about that in Ephesians, right? Yeah, it's a principality. You know, it, it's not something, it's not flesh. It's the, the principalities, like it's not something that we can physically see. It is hidden. It, it's a spiritual realm that I cannot see, but I know that the Lord already has his angels fighting for every single one of us you know and there's this war going on this battle and so we need to know those battles okay where's those battles how are they occurring where you know so be, we're aware and then who is uh know your commander and your ca comrades like who are those that back you up like our saints dude you know uh, our commander our lord jesus christ <laughs> you know but our comrades my mama right comrades. our brothers and sisters our saints you know, here on earth, my brothers, my sister, my sister right here, you know, you that pray for us um, at home and then know your weapons like um, our rosary, right? That's a huge, powerful weapon. Right. Holy Bible. The, the Holy Bible, huge, powerful weapons. Um, asking um, uh, 
our saints to help us. The Eucharist, uh, feed on it as much as you can, you know, because that's going to give us everlasting life. And then know your armor, you know, the armor of God. Place your armor, uh, get ready for battle. And the blood of Jesus, you know, uh, and then keep the enemy out of your camp. So like going to confession, you know, trying to live a holy life, you know, and, and really in all honesty, the closer you get to God and the more you go to confession, the more you're able to see where you fail. Um, and it's not a terrible thing. It's a good thing because every time that you think like, oh my God, you know, like, I can't believe that I just did that. Well, you know what, sister? <laughs> you know, go to confession. Because we are human. And the devil's always trying to influence us. And we need to stay strong in the faith. Um, and there's going to be days that we fall. But, but like we fall, we need to get back up and we need to go straight to confession. And um, do an examination of conscience. Uh, and, and making sure that you keep your camp free of you know infestation of the enemy and then uh, part two of the book uh, it talks about the church teachings about spiritual warfare so the catechism uh, the church council uh, papal documents and then spiritual um, and then scripture for the battle okay so like um, especially if you are um, in like a prayer group or anything like that sometimes people come in so important that you know uh, how to identify things you know there's things that well, we have to call our priest you know especially when you see that there's some some type of manifestation you know um, and then how to handle that you know because uh, the exorcisms our priests are the ones that are gonna do that okay that's not for us little people you know um, and so um, and so it's it's been a really good tool so um, I already told you guys about this one. It is in Spanish. It's called Ayudanos en la Batalla. Uh, Mi Tesoro de Oraciones de Sanación y Liberación. And this is from Father uh, Teodoro Kranz. Okay. So I actually spoke to the, the one of the workers, um, and they said that he's publishing it ne next year in English because I've been asking every time they come to Fresno, like, when are you guys publishing this in English? So he did say sometime um, in the beginning of next year. So once that is um, out then I'll go ahead and um, kind of announce that it's out already okay and then um, just to mention this one the exorcist explains the demonic uh, father Amroth Gabriel Amroth he has since passed away but um, he was like the number one in the Vatican exorcist priest and so I started to reach research his um, his writings so one thing that I wanted to mention is like crystals are bad guys crystal energy anything like that mm -hmm. um new age terrible 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 it opens the doors to the enemy um if you have anything um that is new age or like you didn't even know and you had this crystal for good energy toss it out of your house yeah or even like the bracelets that have like the little eye the or little eye sometimes the little they hand. have the eye or the hand and on they have like the same benedict medals obviously the devil is always trying to um come into holy things and so there's you know the St. Benedict's with the um, the eye or the hand and the, obviously those aren't good so you have to toss them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Father Gabriel Amroth this is what he says and I wanted to share this with you it says it is my conviction as well as my heartfelt advice to all parents that in order to help their children disdain this perspective with its destructive nature it is necessary to educate them from an early age to cultivate a life of faith through prayer, through the mass, and through association with the various Catholic youth clubs and other similar organizations. It's absolutely necessary to give them a sense of God and the awareness of the existence of sin and the devil, the tempter who wishes to lead us to separation from God and therefore to death. And so we need to share this with our kids. We need to tell our kids it's not a joke. It will bring um possible possessions like this poor kid you know that his mom dealt with this stuff and now it fell on him okay and it's so so important and uh, i mean our kids we need to protect our kids and we need to teach them it's okay it's okay don't be afraid to tell them because they see so much worse things on tv 
on um, at schools, at schools, their conversations. If we're not monitoring their uh, internet usage, what they're getting into, you know, I mean, it's just terrible. It's terrible. So we need to talk to our kids. We need to keep them informed. I tell my kids about it. I don't ever want them to mess with anything like that. So I tell them, and I've told them from a young age about what um, ha what happened to me and how I thought this girl was my friend. But it was pure evil. It was pure evil. So Father Amroth, his writings, he has uh, YouTube videos. I highly recommend that you look, look at that. Oh my gosh. Father Jose, uh, Jose Antonio Fortea, oh, he's, he's another exorcist priest, um, good literature. Um, I mean, he'll talk to you about uh, the difference between demonic possession, obsession, and infestation, and what really happens in an exorcism and how signs that indicate possess uh, possession is present. So really good inf information. And then um, an exorcist explains how to heal the possessed and help soul suffering with spiritual crisis. Um, this is Father Apollo uh, Carlene, and this is another good read. Uh, deliverance prayers. Okay, um, this one was from Father. Um, I just said his name earlier. Yes, you did. Repinger. Repinger. <laughs> Repinger. Okay. Oh my God, this is so good. It has tons of different prayers. I mean, tons of different prayers. So, and he's another uh, exorcist priest. And then we have um, Jesse Romero. And uh, there's another book of Jesse Romero. Yes, right? I have it somewhere. Prepare right. my hands is what's up, I think what it's called, right? Yes, prepare my hands for battle. Yeah, that one's battle. a really good book. Yes, yeah. you need to get that book. Um, and then I recently bought this one, The Devil in the City of of Angels. Uh, my encounter with a, a diabolic, and he was. Uh, LAPD and so he would come into situations where he would encounter uh, individuals that were possessed and he just talks about that in his books and how that just came uh, how God just started to show him these things and then before you know it now he speaks on it and I mean he's very 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 strong um, speaker and he's not afraid so he has this um, show and it is called uh, Jesus 911. Okay, and it talks a lot about he talks a lot about aware, you know, bringing awareness, um, and just <clears throat> has a lot of good stories. Um, Virgin Most Powerful is an app that you can get onto your phone. It has podcasts that you can check out uh, it from um, previous shows that he has had. So it's very important that we educate ourselves. And really, you guys, don't be afraid about it. I know that, like... It seems a little scary, yes. but, I mean, this is reality. Yes. And um, the more that we're aware, the more that we're able to prepare ourselves. Yes. And our kids. Yes. Because they're the future of tomorrow, they're the future of the church. Mm -hmm. And so um, the more soldiers we have, you know, um, for Christ, the better, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. we're coming to a time where um, darkness seems like it's prevailing. And... Um, we can't be quiet Catholics anymore. We mm -hmm. have to be courageous Catholics. Mm -hmm. And so, um, obviously, you know, we're moms. So our goal is to really raise good Catholic kids mm -hmm. that are not afraid, that um, are afraid more of losing their relationship with God, you know, and really not caring about um, the things that the world um, entices the youth, you mm -hmm. know. But... Um, yeah, but do not be afraid. I always tell people that I talk to, especially when they're like, oh my God, that's so scary. And I'm like, okay, look, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> uh, second, we need to move forward and know that without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus already defeated death. He defeated death on the cross. And so there is no power in the devil. There is none whatsoever. He's powerless. You know, when you um, give your life to Jesus Christ, oh gosh, you get per this huge protection, this umbrella that reaches out to every single one of your children, every single one of your family members. Uh, Mother Mary, I mean, oh my God, she's just totally amazing. Oh my God, we need to do a show on Mother Mary. It's a total, <laughs> all show on Mother Mary to tell you how amazing yeah, our mama is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so. But, 
so yeah so um thank you sister for well thank you for inviting me <laughs> for coming on the show today um if you like this video go ahead and like it um comment um if you have any questions um you can share it and subscribe make sure to subscribe and obviously like my sister said i will post um all the books that she suggested you guys in peace and god bless peace. you